Thank you, Ruth, and good morning, everyone. Let's see if this works. Yes, it does. Um, well, as Ruth said, we think that the budget yesterday was a game changer. It was a landmark budget, and it showed it, a, us a government that is absolutely determined to get on top of our fiscal problems and to rebalance the economy towards uh, better growth. Now, as has been, uh, you, you may have heard, there is one element of the budget that we really did not like, which was the increase in VAT, and you'll be hearing a bit more about that later on. Um, but, of course, there were lots of things in there to like. We like the increase in personal tax allowances. We like the reduction in corporation tax rate and the help for smaller businesses. We like the changes to employers' national insurance contributions. And we like the clear signal that this government is prepared to make a determined effort to get a grip on our welfare bill. So lots to like. Um, and overall, um, I think you'd say that was a, a budget that, I would say that was a budget that delivered more in terms of fiscal restraint than I had been expecting. But of course, we need to come back to the basic issue here because a lot of people are saying he's gone too far. I and mean, so we need to remember throughout all of this, the basic problem we have. 200 years ago, the economist David Ricardo told us that government debt is no more than deferred taxation. And what I'd like to do is just quickly look at what what, what George Osborne's budget has done for that deferred taxation. So <clears throat> the good news is this chart shows public sector debt interest payments out to the end of the forecast period, comparing uh, Mr. Darling's last budget with George Osborne's budget. And as you can see, the good news is that George Osborne's budget does actually reduce this burden of debt interest payments by about $3.5 billion by the end of the period. The bad news is that it still goes up at an amazing lick over the next few years. So by the end of the period, we are still up to around 70 billion per annum, despite the changes in the budget. But of course, it isn't just a question of the level that uh, we're, with the track we're on, because this whole issue of debt and debt interest is a bit like a super tanker. It's an issue of market confidence, which is very important. And in our briefing in the March budget, we presented this table, which is a, a, another of these famous fan charts. And what it shows is the impact on government debt interest if we have uh, higher interest rates than have been assumed by the Treasury. So the bottom line here shows the debt interest forecast on the basis of the Treasury. So I should now say the Office for Budget Responsibilities, assumptions on gilt yields moving out over the next few years. And basically, they've assumed the yields that are factored in to market prices at the moment. And they go up to around 5% by the end of the period. What we've done is looked at the impact of adding 1%, 2%, and 3% to that outlook. And as you can see, uh, it, the, the, the gap starts to get even bigger, and debt interest rates start to rise up towards 90 billion if we have the worst of our fan chart scenarios realized. So the fact that George Osborne's budget seems to have maintained a lot of market confidence is very important because he's headed off this problem. Now, I'd like to finish by just bringing this back to the level of the individual, this point about deferred taxation. And what this chart shows is the cost of government debt interest per household and that is the green line, forecast from the budget compared to what the average household in this country currently spends on its mortgage interest rate. That's when last cited, about £2,000 a year, um, and that's the dotted red line. And the key thing here is that every family, effectively in Britain, has got a second mortgage at the moment in the form of the national debt. And it, the interest on that mortgage is soon going to exceed the interest on its first mortgage on its own house. So this is a very real burden. And I think it's important to remember when people say we can't deliver spending cuts of the kind that George Osborne has assumed, that if we don't do that, this picture is going to be even worse. There is no way of avoiding this unless we get a grip on the fiscal situation. And I'm going to stop there.